One of the number one questions that most students and parents ask me is, Cantus, how can I find money for college? Well, in today's video, I'm going to show you here with my good friend, Mevany, how you can go to college all on scholarships using your music gifts. Welcome to the Cantus Simmons Show. Welcome to the Cantus Simmons Show. And uh, I have a good friend here in the Simmons studio, the Mevany Biggins. Now, uh, what's going on, Mevany? I'm doing all right. Thank you for having me, man. Listen, you know, you were in the area. <laughs> and uh, so I said, you know what? Let me get Mevany uh, on the show because Mevany, uh, you work with individuals, helping them uh, learn a music instrument and then... Uh, use that to get college scholarships. Correct. Correct. Yes. How yes. long have you been doing that and why did you get into that area? Well, um, I have been teaching for 16 years. This is my 17th year in education. And for the last 16 years, I've helped my students earn over $7 million in college scholarships. How, how many? $7 million in college Come scholarships. Come on, shoot the number. Show them where the Seven, money resides. Listen, listen, <laughs> listen, the receipts are real. Listen, you better pull them up. <laughs> $7 million in college scholarships. Yes, sir. Yes. Yeah. All in the area of all in the area of music performance and um, and basically pretty much teaching children how to utilize that musical skill and, and getting college scholarships. And when you say college music scholarships, basically, you know, being able to participate in an ensemble like marching band, symphonic band, jazz band, and you get to major in what you want to. So you don't have to be a music major to um to to earn a scholarship, but you just have to participate in the actual musical ensemble while you're in school to obtain the to keep the scholarship. Basically, cool. So we're gonna break down. Uh, some of the things that you want to consider where, you know, locating a music scholarship. Now, we're not, we're not going to have all the time to really break down how to locate and land all college scholarships. Uh, that's why if you want to uh, go over to my free college funding workshop over at CantusSimmons.com forward slash workshop, where I break down uh, seven other ways that you can land college scholarships. Simply go over to CantusSimmons.com forward slash workshop. So, uh, Mevin, give a little backstory, right? So, when I came out of high school, mm -hmm. uh, there was this amazing school that I wanted to go to. And uh, it was the great Florida A&M University. Absolutely. Right? And uh, so, I went there and uh, they offered me a full... Uh, uh, a, ba a full academic band scholarship. Not just a band scholarship, mm -hmm. but an academic and band scholarship. Oh, excuse me. Right, okay. Mm -hmm. And um, I said, hey, Kenneth, just send in your SAT scores. <laughs> and uh, my SAT scores came up 40 points. Sure. Wow. Did I ever tell you that? No, you never told me that. Yeah, that's the reason I didn't go to FAMU. Oh, okay. I, I Not a whole you, world knows I why I didn't go to FAMU. Willfully Reclined. <laughs> That's why I say it's the worst mistake of your life. Okay. No, I didn't. I, didn't willfully... I thought you willfully declined. No. You respectfully declined the invitation to attend the highest of Seven Hills. Okay. I didn't. I didn't respectfully decline. It was like I didn't based know. on. See, it wasn't just a band scholarship there, mm -hmm. because my grades was good and I was you know doing the whole STEM thing. It was like, hey, we can give you an academic band scholarship. Mm -hmm. And you know, my SAT scores were forty points mm -hmm. short, and so. um but uh, I ended up not going to FAMU mm -hmm. and ended up going to another prestigious school. Mm -hmm. I brought you a gift. Oh, no, no, <laughs> you better listen. Listen, I, if it's not orange and green, it's going to get burnt. I, I brought you a I'm gift. I'm letting you know right now. If I it's brought not you a orange, gift. orange. I brought orange. you a gift. I went oh, to the great. Let's see, there we go. North there we State go. University. The one yeah. decision. Don't touch this. Get off me. Get off me. <laughs> get off me. So, so, so here's the thing, right? <laughs> Uh, Mevany and I both uh, came through high school on, uh, we were participated in uh, the music program, right? Mm -hmm. Including marching band, symphonic band, jazz band, and mm -hmm. um, when I didn't go to Florida A&M University. Now, I was drum major in high school, so I was already considered the <laughs> guy, right? <laughs> but, uh, you know, honestly, Mevany, when I decided to go to Norfolk State University, mm -hmm. and I've never ever heard of a Norfolk State University, you know, mm -hmm. growing up in... Uh, the great city of Atlanta, Metro Atlanta, DeKalb County. You know, we had big marching bands here. Mm -hmm. What high school did you go to? I went to Columbia High School. I'm sorry. I'm, I'm sorry to hear that. Oh, you know what? First of all, let me 
to shave the entire show. Let me get you all the way together. First of all, <laughs> don't you dare even tip your nose at the Columbia okay. Eagles, sir. High school rivals, right? So I went to the great <laughs> Southwest DeKalb. Columbia's high school is probably what? <laughs> Five minutes away. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, less about, than that. Yeah. Less than that, five minutes away. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And um but that that presented some great opportunities for us. Mm-hmm. You know, I feel like um our band leaders, our directors, our district coordinators really showed us that hey, there is there is a lot of money to go to college where music is concerned. And to piggyback off that, um, Mr. Robert Kahn, uh, shout out to Mr. Kahn, you know, he's still he's still educating. Um, but he was my high school band director at uh, Columbia. And he will always talk about your instrument being a vehicle. Mm-hmm. And as a seventh grader, as a, you know, this a young clarinet player just wanting to be a part of the high school band. Mm-hmm. I never understood what Mr. Khan meant. He's like, you know what? You can get everything you want. All you got to do is open up the case. I'm mm-hmm. like, wow. And like being able to talk about that, saying that this little instrument, all you got to do is play this instrument well mm-hmm. and you can get an education. Mm-hmm. I was like, oh, say less. Mm-hmm. And um, the interesting story was um, for me, um, I I actually received the academic and band scholarship. I'll tell you how I got both. So I graduated from high school with a 3.77 GPA. Mm-hmm. So I was uh, ranked number 11 in my class. And the, the presidential scholarship for FAMU was going to the salutatorian and the valedictorian. Well, the valedictorian attended FAMU. The salutatorian didn't. So it kept dropping down the list. So number, number three didn't want to go. Number four, number five, number six, number eight. And then it got down to 11. That was me. So I got the academic scholarship. And then shout out to Deborah Norman. Still know her you know? name, huh? I still know my counselor's name. Deborah Norman. Never forget that lady. Because I used to bug her every day. I was like, hey, you got anything? Got anything? I was always in the office, always applying, always trying to find different ways. And she's like, hey, Mab, I found something for you. And I got the academic scholarship that way. And then the music scholarship came because I not only learned one instrument very well, I learned two instruments. Mm-hmm. So I picked up clarinet in fourth grade. And I started playing and practicing clarinet in fourth grade. And I picked up trumpet in the 10th grade. So what I would do is I would play trumpet and marching band and play clarinet and symphonic band. So that made me very versatile. So my former band director, Dr. Julian E. White, came to rehearsal. This is actually, I moved to Florida Mm -hmm. uh, from Columbia when I was um, in 11th grade. And he saw me in the middle of performance. We were preparing for contests. And those are band students. You know what contests is. You know, know, getting ready for large group performance evaluation. So he saw me get up. I was playing clarinet for one selection. I had to put my instrument back into my first chair, Mm -hmm. get up, walk across the stage, pick up my trumpet and play another piece because, you know, we were tiny but mighty. We had like less than like 30 students or what have you. So I had to play a trumpet solo Mm -hmm. for another selection for the um, overture. And then I had to play clarinet for the first two of the march and for the um, for the uh, tone poem in the second piece. And Dr. White was like, well, who is that? She playing two instruments in the middle of the concert without warming up. (laughs) And and at the time, his younger brother, Mr. White, was like, yeah, yeah. So at like I auditioned for him. I played I, and I learned both scales on both instruments. And at that point, that's when he offered me a full scholarship for music. So when, you know, talking about those ideas is talking about just the opportunity of all you have to do is just play something well. Mm. All you have to do is just learn how to play this little instrument. All you got to do is open the case. You know, it is stemmed from that one comment from Mr. Khan. So, you know, I really want to give him a shout out because he always preached that there was always something to do. When you walked into that Columbia High School band room, you always had a purpose. There was no idle time with Mr. Right. Khan. It's either you do or you do. <laughs> right, <laughs> That's right, it. right. I think one of the misconceptions is that the only way you can go to college is to be super duper smart mm-hmm. or go to college on a sports athletic scholarship, exactly. right? Mm-hmm. So we have athletic scouts mm-hmm. that would actually go to high schools to find students that, you know, to give them scholarships. Mm-hmm. I don't remember too many scouts coming to uh, to see the marching band or the symphonic band or even scouts coming into uh, the classrooms to see, hey, let me see the president of the, the Glee Club or even or even the, uh, the those on the cheerleading squad, mm-hmm. right? So one of the things I want to break down, and I do this in my programs and stuff like that, is that, you know, there are multiple ways that you can get a college scholarship, right? So we talked about two ways here. Number one, academically, and we've talked about uh, music. And, and specifically, um, you work in this area of music. Mm-hmm. All right. What about three or four things that both students and parents need to take into consideration? Uh, in addition to what you've already said, that they can probably do right now that can prepare them for college and get some of these music scholarships? Um, I want to break it up. So I'm going to break it up to my beginners. So like, let's say you have a child in home, right? And, and I like to call the window of opportunity between the ages of seven and 10. 
That's like the ultimate window of opportunity. Because you yes. started playing at what age? I started playing in fourth grade. So I started playing like around eight, eight or nine. I think I started playing sixth grade. So that's... Yeah. So I started in elementary school. So like okay. being able to start in elementary school is, is, is a wonderful opportunity. Um, definitely setting up a music learning area in your home. You know, do you have a digital piano? Do you have an, an instrument, a quality instrument? In the home, um, making a relationship with your local music specialist in the um, in the public school or the private school, whatever school that you're in, but making a relationship with that actual educator because typically a lot of times in um, schools there's only a, it's a one person department. So in that entire school, there's only one mm-hmm. person who is skilled in that content area of music. Building a relationship with that person is monument. Now, let's say you're an older parent and your child is already involved in a local music program. Definitely building a relationship with that band director because guess what? You know that band director has a pipeline wherever they graduated from or what have you, or even if they're, especially if they're doing a lot of uh, professional development, going to Midwest, going to the different um, um, conferences or what have you, they have relationships with other directors in the state or even regionally that if you're able to excel in that local music program, you'll put your child in a position where they can be, ha- they can have access to college directors who made the same visit and say, hey, do you happen to have any seniors that are, you know, getting yeah. ready to graduate that may be interested in my university? They may not always come to the school, but they'll be on the radar. And that's similar to the like, you know, to the scout because most college band directors don't have that kind of budget that a travel scout right. would have where they're literally traveling all over the country. College directors don't necessarily have that kind of budget. They so can they, make a phone call. Yeah, they can make a phone call and say, hey, who you got? And sometimes all it takes is a phone call. I literally, my band director called Dr. White and said, oh, I got this student here. You might want to pick her up. And it was it was off of that recommendation that mm-hmm. I even got an opportunity to receive a scholarship. So it wasn't mm-hmm. even where I had to apply. Because at the time, I was think I was in 11th grade. So at my 12th grade year, I only I really only applied to one school. That was FAMU, honestly, because I had everything I wanted. I, I got accepted, actually, as a business major. I wasn't a music major when I graduated. I was a business major. So mm-hmm. I got accepted into the School of Business and Industry because I wanted a five-year MBA. That was my goal. So um, pause out. right there. So mm-hmm. a lot of times people feel like, if they get a scholarship in a certain field, mm-hmm. that they have to major in that certain field. That's completely false. <laughs> completely false, right? So if you do, you know, maybe individuals say, hey, you have this gift or this mm-hmm. talent around music, you can use that to get in the door. Mm-hmm. But once you get in the, the college door, now you can major in something like business or science. Or engin- I mean, less than, t- and, and at the time I was marching, I think we had like 360 members at the program, mm-hmm. less than 10%, about 8% were music majors. Mm-hmm. Less than less than ten percent in that entire program were music majors in um, in the program, and even at, at look at any of your programs. If a lot of these large marching band programs, these symphonic band programs, you know, there are a lot of different majors that come out of the program. It, you, at engineering majors, you know, business majors, pre med, mm-hmm. um, pharmacy um, student. I mean, we had every had every single school in the program, right. and most of them were on scholarship. So a lot of times in the, mar- in the, in the marching band, band mm-hmm. using music, yeah. Music, music, because music. just because I can play and I can perform, and the biggest thing is about the character development as well. Because when you're on when you're on a band scholarship, you are a bandsman. You come to every rehearsal, you come to every performance, you come to every game. There is no mm-hmm. oh, well, I'm gonna skip this one. No, are you serious? Mm-hmm. You getting paid to play, you know, for lack of a better term. Right. So you need to show up. Right. So the the biggest thing within having a band scholarship is realizing that you're there to serve the organization that get that gifted you the opportunity to learn. Your, to get your education mm-hmm. by participating in the ensemble. So a lot of times when it comes to, well, I'm on this band scholarship, don't devalue that because you're getting an opportunity to get an education just because you can play at home very well. And a lot of times I see a lot of students who don't value that gift because it comes so easy to them. Yep. But you don't realize that there's a check being written for your ability to play. Right. So you can go Now, you may not play. see the check. You but don't somebody, see the check. But somebody's, somebody's writing paying, a check. Right. You know? I mean, I was very, I look back on it, I was very blessed and fortunate because there were there students, there were classmates, bridesmaids that stood at my wedding who had to nickel and dime and save and scrape because they weren't on scholarship, but I was just getting up and going to class. And I was just, oh, do, 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 do. okay, let me just go ahead and fill out my classes. There are people who had to really figure out a way to find out how to pay $400 worth of books when all I had to do was swipe a card. Yeah. You know, that kind of disparity that, you know, you didn't get to experience puts you in a headspace to where you actually can learn. Mm-hmm. So really being able to understand and value that gift all because you put the work in right. a few years earlier. Mm-hmm. So a lot of times, you know, parents will come to me and say, well, you know what? Well, how young is too young? Or we want to wait a little bit later. No, you need to start now because mm-hmm. the time is your friend when your child is five or six. Mm-hmm. When your child is 15 or 16, I'm turning you away. No, I'm not going to put myself under that kind of stress right. trying to get your sc- child scholarship ready in less than a year and a half. At that, absolutely not. Not that it cannot happen. I have done it before as a public school teacher. 
Because in public school, you have that mindset. And I believe it to this day, you teach who comes to the door. You know, that's how you're able to develop your skills as an mm-hmm. educator. You teach who comes through the door. There, There is no turning away a child. No. Right. You want to play? Let's go. Let's move. You mm-hmm. know? So, yes, I've done it. I've helped, you know, juniors and seniors, you know, get competitive for scholarships. But it's entirely, entirely stressful. The amount of time it takes to have to get them over that learning curve. Not only having to learn the skill, but perfect it and then become competitive. It's, it's very, very taxing. Right. So, you know, definitely if you're a parent, you have a child that's sitting at home that needs something to do, put them on the instrument. Get mm-hmm. them to learn something, you mm-hmm. know, because you don't have to be musically inclined to be a musical child. You don't have to be musically inclined to earn a scholarship. You can just utilize, again, that vehicle. Open up the case <laughs> and play them notes. Right. And you get to get an education provided for. So mm-hmm. I'm just privileged to say that, you know, my bachelor's education was provided for, my master's education. I was actually a counselor for band camp. Mm-hmm. So it wasn't a music scholarship. I was, I was a counselor by day. And I went to school in the evening. That's how I got my master's degree paid for. You mm-hmm. know, it's it's you start to find ways of, of not having to incur that student loan debt, which could be crushing right. for a lot of families. You so know, you were able to graduate without any no code? No, no debt. Mm-mm. How how did your parents feel about that? <laughs> <laughs> so uh, my mom and dad were very relieved, but okay. So the story behind me was right. Um, I initially wanted to be a pediatric cardiovascular surgeon. I was inspired by Dr. Ben Carson, which is this is when he came out with the the, the, um, the book Thinking Big. Mm-hmm. So my mom had me read the book. Then I no, then I read Gifted Hands. I mean, I was just consumed. I idolized this man. Of course, the, neither here nor there. But still, as a young child, I idolized this black doctor, this neurosurgeon that was able to separate these conjoined cl- twins. So I wanted to be a doctor. I wanted to be a heart doctor. So my parents supported that. Oh, my child wants to be. And I come from a Jamaican household. You know, Caribbean parents is doctor, <laughs> lawyer, engineer, possibly. Right. Everything else, oh, you, you, you're dead to me, right? right? Right, So you can imagine my dad's shock when I came to him and said, hey, dad, you know, I, I like this music thing. I think I could do this, you know? You know, so he's like, living. He's like, how did my child come from being a doctor mm-hmm. to a musician? So it was just like this, right? So when I got accepted in the fam, I, I applied for business because I know I knew that I wanted to incorporate music and business some kind of way. But I was like, okay, well, let me go ahead. I want to go ahead and like, you know, get my in, my training in business and I'll continue to keep music as my passion or what have you at that time. So when I did that, my parents were still happy that I got the scholarship or what have you. But when I came to fam, when I did my advisor session with my uh, freshman advisor, she looked at my, she looked at my schedule and she saw that I had like intro to accounting, you know, intro mm-hmm. to business operations. She, you know, I had all the business stuff, right? Mm-hmm. But then she saw that um, she's like, oh, you got this marching band on here, huh? I'm like, <laughs> yeah. And I was like, and this is me, freshman. Yeah, I'm going to be in the band, you know? <laughs> and then she was like, oh, so you got clarinet choir? I had clarinet choir for like lunch and I had some phonic band. And I think I had applied clarinet. I had all these music classes. So my hours were overloaded. I had like. 18 to 19 hours, which which uh, uh, they want freshmen to have like 12 or 13. They want you to have a small load right? so you don't overload yourself. So she was like, oh, well, you, you in the marching band. Yeah, this this not going to work at SBI. Yeah, I see you. Yeah, you'll march for like a year, but you, yeah, me, that that's all you're going to get. I'm like, oh, and she said, oh, and that clarinet choir, that's going to have to go to. I was like, well, that, why, why don't, she's like, well, don't you have to eat lunch? I said, I said, I'd rather play. Wow. I said, I'd rather play. I can eat on the way to class. She's like, well, you got some fun event here too. I was like, well, that's Tuesday and Thursday. I was like, that's lunch. I'll, I'd rather play. So she's like, well, you know what? If you're going to make it here at the School of Business and Industry, um, you're going to have to choose between this uh, this music thing and this, this business thing. Like she was just very, very like, I'm like, what? I'm like, why are you, what, what is this? I'm sitting here like super excited. I think I left the room almost in tears because I'm like, I'm not choosing. Mm-hmm. I just remember saying, I'm not choosing. I'm not choosing. If I have to choose something, I'm going to go with what I want to do. So I literally had to walk back up the hill. If you from the if you from the hill, you know what I'm talking about. When you have to go from the school of business to industry, you gotta go walk back up the hill mm-hmm. and back down the foot hill, you're right. And I went, I changed my major and I never looked back ever since. I did graduate with my minors in business. I still took classes. Mm-hmm. I just didn't go through that formal route through the school of business and industry. I said I wanted to do music music. And your master's was yeah, my master's was music education as well. Mm-hmm. Um, and I, of course, I took a lot, a lot of certifications um, in Georgia State or what have you with mm-hmm. instructional design, um, with entrepreneurship. There's a whole lot of this, like a lot of certifications here and there. But when I told my dad, literally, he blew his top. He was ready to come to the school. He's like, because I was two and a half hours away. They were in Jacksonville. He's right. like, I'll come to the school right now. I'll take you home right now. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, 
like, oh my gosh. And I'm glad to say that my dad has come around since then, but he still gives me the side eye, you know, every, every now, now you know, every now and then. Cause again, but college like, was paid for. Yeah, college was paid for. Sorry, I made that long story. But yes, college was paid for. But I was just really, really thankful, you know, for my parents that they didn't have to take out any loans on my behalf, mm-hmm. you know, for that mm-hmm. thing. And it's, it was a really refreshing idea for them to just, all they had to do was drive. They didn't have to worry about, you know, repayment and stuff like that. So that mm-hmm. was great. Cool. So here's the deal, right? I believe that having a college degree gives you options in life, right? Uh, The cool thing about Mevany, she hasn't told her complete story, but, you know, you went into music. Yeah. And uh, now you're doing business Mm -hmm. as an (laughs) entrepreneur, and you have this amazing um, music program where you help students. Tell us a little about you help students do what now? Well, I help students learn how to play their instruments so well that they earn college scholarships. And Mm -hmm. basically, with our beginning musicians, I teach them how to read music, play their instrument, and perform a home concert in less than 30 days. So the the runway from them first starting to playing is shorter. So they get the success immediately Mm -hmm. upon their enrollment. So with that, you know, I take a lot of students, everybody starts with piano. So a lot of that framework, we, we work on prepare, practice, and perform. And prepare, basically, is that children need skills. And if they don't have skills, they're not going to know what to do. So we have designed a way to where we list all the skills down and all the students do is learn those skills. And all we will do is work and check for mastery. That's it. Once they learn those skills, they go into practice because in Music by Mevany, they don't practice because guess what? They need to know what to practice. We, have, we call them execution goals. They have an execution goal mm-hmm. for each skill and concept, and <laughs> you go play them notes. <laughs> She's just that. I've seen some of her uh, her content with some of the students that she works with, and you know, you want the students to develop the skill mm-hmm. because if they can develop the skill on the front end, mm-hmm. you said around that six to eleven yeah. mark to the twelve mm-hmm. mark, right? Mm-hmm. When it's now come, when it uh, now becomes time to be a junior. Mm-hmm a senior in high school, they have that skill. Mm -hmm. And when it's time to go to college, Mm -hmm. uh, like your band director said, he said, well, music is a vehicle, Mm -hmm. right? It's a vehicle. So now the things they learn with your program, Mm -hmm. when it gets the time to go to uh, college, they can land a scholarship. Yeah, they go to the performance. And we call it running the table. So when you get to the high school division in our program, you're running the table. You're preparing for the Olympics. So, like, for I always give this analogy, Simone Biles. When Simone Biles decided she wanted to audition and make the, not only make the USA team, but also lead, the USA team to the all, you know, for the all around title. She didn't just decide one year and then the next year she made the team. She made that decision years ago. Right. Some right. decisions you make years ago. You know, I, I, I talked to my sister about Beyonce. And everybody loves Beyonce. But if you look back on her previous interviews. She started years ago. She started years ago. This was not a, uh, I wake up and I'm flawless. See, I see how I did that. I see how I did that. Flawless. <laughs> yeah, you, did. But, you know, she, inten- she was intentional about. Her methods and what she wanted to do to um to grow. Same thing with being a musician is that with parents, particularly with parents, the children are not going to know. Right. I always tell the parents all the time, you're not going to know what is going to blossom out of your child learning the skill. But as you, as a parent, you're the guide. Your 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 job is to see three or four steps ahead. Your job is to, okay. They're here now. So my son is three. I'm already looking at six and seven. Mm-hmm. So he's three now, and he has about what fifty sight words under his belt. I need him to get to two hundred and fifty. How am I going to get him to 250 side words? Now I'm going to go ahead and get the phonetics together. Now I got to go ahead and get the work. You know, now I'm look, I'm working on literacy with my toddler, with my toddler child. So I'm looking three and steps ahead, three or four years ahead. By the time he's seven, he needs to be on this proficiency level with his Lexile scores. I'm actively looking for ways to provide the pathway to where my child is going to be great. Now, am I going to physically do the work? No. But as a parent, I'm here to lay the path. Mm-hmm. All you got to do is walk. You should not have to worry about how you're going to be successful. That's my job. Mm-hmm. Your job is to execute. I always tell parents all the time, I'm here as the guide. You're here as the provider. You lay the pathway. All we want the children to do is walk. Right. You know, because you're having, you have someone in your in your arsenal that has done it before. And I tell parents all the time, it's like, you know, some parents ask me, well, you know, are you so sure you're going to get the children scholarships? I'm like, I was the first one who got myself a scholarship. I got me together. Right. right. You know, if I can get me together. You All I'm doing is teaching the other children how to get together because yeah. I did it myself without training and without private lessons and without a coach. I didn't have private lessons when I was going through school. Right. As a matter of fact, my own one and only lesson was in 12th grade and the guy told, taught me nothing. No disrespect. <laughs> you know? Wow. So if I was able to do it with my, by myself without private lessons, imagine what your child can do with someone who already knows how to do it already and has done it again and again. 
and again and again. So and when that I, now produces seven million dollars in scholarships. Seven and counting, it should be and, higher. And, I, I'm and actually and lowballing count. it. It should be higher. Yeah, and the seven million dollars <laughs> working with students and parents. Yep. With the instrument. Mm -hmm. With the instrument. And the instruments that you focus on are what? Um, I focus on piano, clarinet, trumpet, flute, saxophone, trombone, anything that requires breath. Breath. Anything that requires breath. All the students start with piano. We do have a piano pedagogy program. If the students decide they want to be competitive with piano, we do have a team of instructors who go who go through the pedagogy route. Mm -hmm. As far as them learning their um, concertos, their different sonatas, um, sonatinas and sonatas that they need to go through that pathway. But for band, um, definitely all the wind band instruments, anything on the conductor score. So all of those things that require breath. I love it. I love it. And if people, students and parents want to work with you, what's a good resource for them to? My Master Musicians Roadmap. So if you go to mastermusicroadmap.com and, um, and go ahead and download that guide, that's the first step because I actually show in that guide that same framework we're talking about here that helps you kind of understand what the steps are into making sure your child is not only having the right foundation, but musically competitive. And then within that guide is a link to schedule a music discovery session so we can get on the phone and really talk about your family's personal needs and see how we can work together. Well, cool. Awesome. Listen, I'm all for helping you find the money you need to go to college. Now, if you're a parent, if you're a student, and you say, you know what? I do have this gift. I do have this talent. I've participated in the band. I played the clarinet. I played the trombone. You can go fund your college education with music. All right. Now, if you want more tips and tricks on how to locate and land college scholarships, I definitely encourage you to go over to cantasimmons.com forward slash workshop, where I actually break down uh, my college funding framework and show you and show you how to get money from the government, others, uh, money from other people like scholarships as well as using your money to fund your college education. So simply go over to cantorsimmons.com forward slash workshop and um, music by Mebony. Thank That's you. Me. Thank you so much <laughs> for being here today. Um, I think this is so helpful. Um, both of us were blessed to get our BS mm -hmm. uh, degrees on scholarships mm -hmm. to go get our master's degrees on scholarships mm -hmm. and uh listen if this has been a blessing for you we want you to be able to do the same thing all right i'm Cantor simmons this is the great mebony biggins and remember this there's only one game in life that counts and that's your a game hey we'll talk to you soon bye-bye